Hello, my name's Mark JB and welcome to my campervan studio. Uh, we're down on the beach in Broadstairs, uh, Botany Bay, and first I'm going to go down and record the sound of the ocean. Then I'm going to bring it back up here and I'm going to make an ambient house track out of the recording uh, using some wonderful equipment. Uh, just want to take you through what we'll be using down on the beach. We've got some Sontronics microphones here. These are the STC-1S. So this is a high pass switch here and today we're going to have it at 150 hertz because any wind causes quite a low frequency rumble on the microphones. So we'll get rid of that. With the microphones there are different techniques to recording stereo fields. So the first commonly used one is called the XY technique and you have the microphones at 90 degrees and you have the business end of the microphone in the same place. Which means that when a sound comes towards the microphone, it hits both microphones at the same time. So you don't get any phase issues. Now, phase issues are really important because in a lot of nightclubs and television, the stereo signal is summed into mono, which means that if this is reading um, a kick drum, and then this is reading the same kick drum, but when you're getting peaks here, you're getting troughs here, they cancel each other out and you won't hear any kick in the mix. So that's why the XY technique is very good. It's not a very wide mix, but it's a very, very sure one. The next microphone technique is called ORTF. That stands for Office de Radio Diffusion Television Francaise. And it sounds complicated. It's also called side other side, so we we'll just stick to that. So this is, you have them coming out at 110 degrees and people say that you're meant to have 17 centimeters between here. So it almost simulates the human ears, what you'd hear here. So if you record like this, when you hear it on headphones, everything sounds super realistic. But this is not to be confused with binaural recording where you have a head and you have ear canals and you have all the reflections of the ears coming towards the microphones. So this is ORTF. The third technique is called space pair. So you have one microphone sticking straight out here and then you have your second microphone sticking straight out here. With space pair, it's important not to have them too close together, otherwise you can get comb filtering from a signal arriving here and then here and you get resonant frequencies coming. So when we're recording the ocean, you need to record it about five meters apart. So today, it's a little bit windy. Uh, the wind is about 20 miles per hour. So I've very kindly been lent from a friend, this beastie here. This is a Rycote stereo blimp. And it's, you place the microphones inside here. There's not an awful lot of room inside there to get two microphones and this is not really a standard technique but it's the only technique you can use in one of these so we're going to place one microphone like that and then we're going to piggyback the other microphone on top sticking exactly the other way because we've got cardioid pickups on the microphones that means that this microphone is going to be picking up sound from around here and this microphone is going to be picking up sounds around here which means that they get two different signals and if you add them together there's not going to be any phase problems so that's the microphone the rest of the gear is we've got the Steinberg UR22 Mark II here this is a beautiful piece of kit brand new out from Steinberg so you've got your inputs at the front here it has phantom power and using it with an iPad, you need to have a battery pack here. So I got this off eBay, it was about 12 pounds from China. And the battery pack here goes in here. Um, the battery pack feeds five volts, a USB volt. The battery pack feeds five volts into the UR22, which is the USB voltage and that keeps the whole thing alive and also keeps the phantom power going and you plug the USB port straight into the iPad via a camera docking adapter here. So here we are, we've got Cubasis here 
Now, when you buy the UR22 Mark II, you also get Cubasis LE thrown in for free. I've got Cubasis here, but this package here is perfectly adequate to go anywhere and do mobile recording. This is a very, very versatile um, set of equipment indeed. So that's about it. There we got. So also, I shall be using the HPH Yamaha headphones in order to monitor the sound and that just plugs straight in here. We've got um, a phone's level on front of the interface. Right, let's head down to the beach. Well, that was a very blustery time down at the beach. And we've got the studio set up now. So let me take you through the studio. We've got Apple Mac Pro here with Cubase on there. It's Cubase 8.5. We've got here the same interface we were using for the mobile studio down there. This is the UR22 Mark II. That's running off the USB bus power from the laptop. We've got the Yamaha CS Reface. That is running off batteries. Uh, it takes six AA batteries that go in the back. Um, we have HS5 Yamaha speakers, which in this space sound really bassy and punchy. And we have the iPad here. And now we're gonna transfer across everything that we've captured from the beach. So let's get that the correct way up. Right, my code is 1234, by the way. To get the project out of Cubasis and put it into Cubase, we're going to go into Media, to Projects, and here we have our Botany Bay Ocean recording. I'm going to go to Share, and then Zip. So that is now zip, compressing the entire thing down to Zip file. And with any luck in the Campervan Studio, we should be able to transfer the entire Cubasis project exactly into a Cubase project. Now the plugins, if you were using Cubasis to uh, make an entire track and putting delay and reverb and all these things on there and also using the inbuilt sounds that they got as well. These transfer across the Cubase in the closest kind of way and maybe a little tweaking is needed but essentially it does a fantastic job of transferring everything. Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, project shared. Now we're gonna open up iTunes. Here we are and we can use the magical iTunes sharing interface. So we go into iPad, into apps. Here we go. Down to Cubasis. And then here into projects. And then we go save to desktop. So that's now gonna transfer the entire project out of the iPad into the laptop. Okay, on my screen here, we have all of the projects which were in the iPad. And now we can go into Cubase 8.5. And if you want to import in Cubase's files into Cubase, you need to go to the Cubase website and download a special patch. So here we go. Import in Cubase's project. Let's go to desktop, projects, Botany Bay, ocean recording. And yeah. And here we go. This is it. So we can hear the ocean recordings that we did. So I actually did three recordings. This is the near distance recording. It 
So you can hear the Sontronics microphones are really detailed, they're really crisp. You can actually hear the foam as it's coming up underneath the microphones. It's beautiful. And the stereo panorama is so detailed. The Sontronics really are beautiful microphones. So I did two further recordings. This is halfway up the beach. Sounds pretty similar actually. And then I did one from right at the back of the beach. We've probably got some reflections coming off the cliff behind. This is a lot more gentle than that. So I think we're going to use the near distance recording I've got, which is about six minutes long. That's really beautiful. Right, so let's open up a new project. So here we are. This is the same template I use for all of my housey type stuff. Right, so let's put it in a new folder. Okay. Um, so this can be future music ocean. Yeah, spelt it beautifully wrong. I've missed an E, but who cares? We're making music in a camper van by the beach. Okay, so let's activate that. And I'm just going to drag in the audio here. Okay, so now we've got the audio. So here we are. We've got our fresh blank project and now we're going to make an ambient house track around the recording of the ocean. Let's have a listen to the ocean sound first. You can see on the screen here, this is the, all the different frequencies here. You see with the ocean, it's, it's pretty much like white noise in that you've got frequencies all, all over the spectrum. So in this track, I don't actually need the low frequencies because I don't want them interfering with the kick and the bass. So let's, there we are. Let's take it up to about. So we're not gonna add much effects to this ocean, but I'm gonna add a little bit just to bring out the bits of the treble to help it poke through the mix. So I'm gonna go for a beautiful EQ. This is the RND EQ made by Yamaha for Steinberg. And this is modeled on a Neve. Now with this EQ, actually, if you just put this EQ on with, with no um, boost or cut on it, and then you create another track without the EQ on, and phase reverse it and have listened to the difference, you can hear that it puts in this really subtle high-end saturation. So this has got a beautiful simmering sound to it. I'd say, I'm gonna give a little bit. There we are. That's where, yeah, that's really beautiful and bright now. Okay, so let's start making some beats. Right, okay, we're gonna go for um, Groove Agent, which is the inbuilt Cubase drum machine. Here we go. Now Groove Agent has had a massive um, improvement recently with the acoustic drum kits that you get in there, which are pretty special. And the dance stuff is really good as well, so. I am looking for Progressive House Kit 2 for this, which is one of my favorite kits. Where are we? Okay, so Progressive. Here we are, Progressive House Kit 2. There. So tempo wise, I'm gonna take that down to about 116. Nice and slow. Okay, so let's start building from over here. Let's get in there a bit more. Get a snap on. Now I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. There's no 
there's no hard and fast rule, but if you want to work really fast and really easy, rather than going through loads of menus, it's really handy to have some keyboard shortcuts. So for example, ones that I've got that I use a lot is a, a duplicate function. Um, also inserting silence, uh, getting the, the pitch shift up for audio quickly and getting time stretch up for audio quickly, all the kinds of things that you'll use all the time. It's very handy to have them on keyboard shortcuts. And then once you've done it a few times, it just becomes second nature. And before you know it, you're actually creating music without even thinking about it. So here we are. Right, so let's get the beautiful click on. Okay, so we'll just start off with a, a kick. Okay, there we go. So I've pressed Q and I've quantized it. There we are. So let's copy it up four times and then we'll just work on this here. So uh, next I'm going to put in a clap. Here we go. Okay, I think we'll just keep it a tight snare for time being. We'll introduce the clap later. Right, here we go. So we'll do the hi-hat and snare at the same time. Save a bit of time. There you are. You can see I've pressed something by mistake there. So let's just cut that there. There we go. And because this is more of an ambient chill out track, to get the track to build to go up to the next section, there's a trick, rather than adding more stuff, you can actually take stuff away before it goes into the next section. So at the end of, uh, how, what is this? At the end of every eight bars, I'm gonna take away a whole bar of kick here. And that actually gives a little bit of release, a bit of space, a bit of tension as well. So, okay, let's do that there. Right, and we of course want to crash. There we are. Okay, let's quantize that. And then get that going on every eight bars. Lovely, nice and mellow. Um, Later on, I want to put in this really nice clap that's in there. Now the great thing about Cubase is with an instrument, if you get the part and you drag it down to the next track, it will actually duplicate the instrument and you'll be able to put separate effects on there. So, so have a listen to this. If I now change the kick there or put an effect on it, I've just changed the volume it's actually not going to affect the hi-hat and snare that's on the different channel. It's really handy, really quick, ergonomic way of working. Now, in fact, I really recommend Cubase in terms of just being able to create music without even thinking about it. It's a, it's a great tool and once you've repeated things a few times, it just becomes so second nature that the creativity can flow. Right, so let's put in that that really nice clap. So that will go in here. Okay, so actually I want to put in a little double clap. So here. This is the MIDI editor in Cubase. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this. Okay, so let me just check that's right. There we go, lovely. So I'm gonna bring the level of that down a little bit. Okay, so that would be a nice builder at that point. Okay, uh, next up, let's put in some synth. So with this, I'm actually going to use the reface 
Right, I want to see how long we've got that. So 33, the end of the track is at 318. So let's put in another, ah, we've got the intro. Okay, 318. Right, we'll just want one more section. Okay, so I'm gonna actually get all those drums put in the correct place. That's too long. Right, so now this track is gonna be, oh, we don't need that there. So I have a little outro. Now I've arranged simple drums up to three and a half minutes because I know this is just gonna be a simple radio style mix. So already you can see here, we've done very little work, but on the screen, we've already got a nice arrangement going on there. Okay, and also I think it's time to start coloring these because it makes life a lot easier to see what you're doing. Oh, let's go for green there. Good, and save off really important to save. The amount of times that I've had a little crash or a glitch but I saved two minutes beforehand and I can go back to two minutes before. I've saved hours of my life. I think a lot about making music, if you're going to spend serious hours doing that every day, is finding ergonomic processes that make it a lot easier because you can make your hands tired, you can get fed up if you're just constantly going through menus. So just figuring out a way that works for you because there is no right way of doing things, just a way that works for you that makes things easier. Makes it much more interesting and creative. Okay, so good. Right, now let's go to the reface. So the reface, I'm using that as a MIDI controller in this instance, but it's also outputting into the Steinberg interface. So let's have a listen to that. Right, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record down uh, the MIDI parts of the synths that I want, and then I'm going to use the MIDI to re-trigger the interface, the, sorry, re-trigger the reface, and then, because the reface it's actually something that I've been dreaming of doing for a while, but never actually got around to doing it, is having a real analog feel that's organic and authentic. I, I'm much more into authentic music. I know that sounds really pretentious, but what I mean is rather than just taking some samples off the shelf and banging it all in, actually making them from scratch and spending a bit more time to make everything a little special, this is really cool because you, find the sound that you want and you won't recreate it because as soon as you change something you're not going to put the sliders back in the same place but there is an iPad app uh, which I'm going to show you now which is very handy from Yamaha okay I will be changing my uh, pin number after this video by the way okay um, so here we are it's called Capture Reface capture, there we are. And all you do, it's really simple, you just literally plug it into um, the reface, the USB, into your camera adapter, into your iPad, and you can capture any sound and save all your presets. There's also another app online. There's a, a, a program on the internet, but you need Google Chrome to use it because that's got, uh, it's MIDI compatible. But this reface is, is fantastic. But I'm not gonna use this today. I'm actually gonna create something from scratch. Okay. So before we put our MIDI down, just so we get a vibe of, um, of what we can do, uh, let's create a MIDI track and then we're gonna find a sound on the reface. Okay, so let's call a CS uh, synth. Right, here we go. So all MIDI inputs. And that goes out to uh, Reface CS. Oh, actually, we don't want to do that quite yet. That's it, otherwise, we're going to get double the MIDI signal. Right, so Reface, really, really super cool piece of kit, this. So let's get everything just, let's bring everything down to a bog standard saw wave sound. Okay, so cut off, there we go. Right, right. There we are, so now we've got saw wave. Right, 
So let me take you from the left to the right and show you what everything does. So here we've got volume. Oh, sorry, pitch bend first. And you can actually use it to define the pitch bend. Um, there's a command you do when you turn it on. Um, you've got volume. And amazingly, this has got two tiny little speakers in it, which sound great. So if you've got it on your lap, you can just groove away with it to your heart's content. So you've got octave. Two up, two down. You've got a looper, so you can record a little loop. Okay, hound. There, there we are. <laughs> right, uh, next you have got um, the LFO, which you can assign to different things. So you can assign it to amps, so you get tremolo thing. And it goes so fast up to ring modulation. Uh, you can sign its filter. So you can get a wobble. Yeah. Right, you can assign it to pitch. Do some pretty crazy stuff like that and you can also assign it to the oscillator which we'll come to in a little bit um, here you have got portmento uh, so normally it's um, a polyphonic instrument but you can make it mono further up you push it the more portmento you get so here we've got the oscillators the first one is a saw and when you bring in texture it brings in an octave below. When you bring in the modulation, it brings in some kind of super saw. So when I come to do the pads, we're going to be playing around with this. Shape shifting the sound as we go along, because I suppose the ocean's always changing, um, tides coming in, tides coming out. I know it sounds really pretentious. What am I talking about today? It's being in the beach in a camper van that does it. So we're gonna be moving everything around very slowly when we're doing it. Uh, next up, you've got um, a square wave, which is a pulse width modulator. So you can hear the narrowness coming there. And this adds in They are beautiful, eh? Um, here you've got, uh, I think this is a synced oscillator. So one oscillator drives the other. I think that's great. So you can get some really nasty sounds there. I think this is ring modulation. Even though it sounds pretty unmusical, if you just sit with it and just slowly tweak it, you can actually find some really, really amazing, amazing sounds for leads and basses. And at the top, you've got FM. So this is an analog synthesizer, but it also operates like a frequency modulation FM synthesizer, like a DX7. So let's put it back to a saw wave because that's what we're going to be using for our pad. Now I'm not going to have any lower octave in there. A bit of modulation. We've got our cutoff. Beautiful. Um, here we've got our uh, envelope section. So I'm going to bring down the decay a bit. And then give it a bit of release as well. So there we are, a little bit of release on there. So this goes, uh, this lever here just does between the envelope going into the um, amplitude um, or the envelope going to the filter. So I have a roundabout there. And then you've got some effects on here. So. You've got phaser, chorus, flange, delay, and distortion. Mm. 
Right, okay, cool. So now let's put down some MIDI for that. All right, here we go. Synth, synth, MIDI. Okay. Right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, that's it. So this is gonna be a pretty simple song. Okay, let's save off, really important. Get my snap back on. Okay, and then let's copy that up there. Oh, hang on. Let's just get in a bit further so we can, haha, <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, and this is a really useful function. It's the legato function. So let me just check these are all in time. If I go to MIDI here, to functions legato, it makes all the MIDI notes long coming off when the next one comes in. Right. Okay, brilliant, so we've now got that. We're gonna really get cracking now. So I'm now going to use that to trigger the reface. I'm gonna warp the sound as we go through and then record it um, out of the reface audio outs into the Steinberg interface. So let's create an audio track. So reface synth, synth, okay and make sure that that is uh, stereo in. So that should be recording now in theory. Beautiful, look at that. Right, let's just back the volume down a bit. So it's quite coming through hot. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna go through three minutes of track. Um, this will probably be edited to a bit shorter later and I'm gonna mess around with the reface and I'll tell you what I'm doing as we go through. Okay, so here we go. Right, so let's keep it nice and short. So this has got a very low delay on it, on the envelope. So let's open it up a bit. Let's bring up the cut off a bit. Okay, we're gonna bring up the modulation. And play around with that. So that's like the super saw kind of thing. So really push it up now. Right now, let's get the phaser going in. Right, I think we peaked a little bit there. I think we're okay. I'm bringing out the sustain. Okay, and down. So after this, we're gonna add in a delay and a bit of reverb onto Cubase. I'm gonna put in a ping pong delay, which just gives it a lot of space. Okay, let's bring it right down. 
So we're bringing this part down so we can have other elements in the track have a bit of space here. Okay, and we'll bring it back up. Right, let's bring the phraser right down and the modulation. So that's just sublime. There we go. So that is a reface. That's why it's so awesome. Because you can just go for a whole track, monkey around with all the sliders and get a really authentic um, and evolving soundscape from it. Right, let's save it off. I certainly don't want to lose that. Wow, it's beautiful out there. Look, we're by the ocean in the camper van. Oh my goodness, this has been my dream for ages. Right. Um, it's like a shed, but a shed on wheels with a music studio in it. <laughs> this is just great. I'm going to spend a lot of this summer in this camper van. Right, so we've got that. Okay, so. Okay, we're just listening to the reface on its own. So I'm going to put it through the, a little bit of compression first. Just to level out a bit. This is just the standard Cubase compressor. It's really, really handy. Okay, and I'm gonna put it through the ping pong delay. So that gives you, let's go for one over eight. So, so I'm gonna go for maximum spatialness. And then a mix of about 19%. With Every single template I have, I have a bus that goes um, into a compressor which is side-chained by a trigger. So here at the top is my trigger. Um, it's the same one that I use for every single track, but that's just the template. All the sounds are different for each production. So let's get that all the way out there. That trigger goes into this compressor here. So you can see that that is ducking the signal down just there. So let's put the reef face through the, the bus with that compressor on. Here we are. Right, okay. Okay. So let's bring the volume down of that into the mix. There you are. So you can hear it ducking when the kit comes in. Just gives the whole thing a bit of space and punch and pump. Um, when we, I particularly use this when I'm putting a bass in, which is what we're going to do next, because when you have a bass and the kick frequency at the same time, both of them add together, all that energy adds together. So if you take out the power of the bass frequency um, while the kick comes in, then have it come in afterwards, all of that power from the kick won't get taken away. So particularly if you're making electronic dance music of some description, then you can really feel the kick in the club is if you have it coming in at the same time with the bass and then it gets mastered, everything gets squeezed together and then the power of the kit goes. You just want to have that come through nice, clean. Right. So already it's sounding absolutely beautiful, like the kind of track you want to make by the ocean. We haven't even put in the sound of the ocean yet, but we'll do that in a bit. Right, so now let's find a nice bass sound. So let's use the pulse width modulation sound. Right, so we need it quite snappy. Okay, right, and then. That's really nice. So same, I'm going to add in the MIDI for that. 
So add MIDI track. Okay, bass MIDI. Here we go. So let's unsolo that. Okay, here we go. Right, play the wrong note at the end. We really didn't want to do that, so let's just bring that down. I'm amazed. We're sitting in the camper van. We've got all these bright lights in here. There's a film crew in this camper van. You wouldn't believe it. There's a tiny space, but there's 10 people in this camper van. And people are walking past with their dogs, and they just don't even notice. It's unbelievable. And there's all this loud music coming out as well. Right, so let's quantize all of that. Right, actually, I think I want something a little more softer than that. Okay, so let's fiddle around with the sound a bit more. It's sounding a bit woody. Okay, maybe. Right, okay, we're almost there. Wanted to have a bit more bite. Okay, that sounded good. Ah, let's add in that lower octave. There you go, that's more like it. Don't want too much chorus on there or modulation. Just want it to be nice and clear. Right, good. So let's now record down the audio for the bass. So, bass. Okay, so as that should do it. Okay. So same again, we're just gonna shape the sound a little bit as we go through. I think we need to turn that clap down a bit. This is so much fun, you can just ride the faders. Okay, cool, so that's the bass in. Beautiful, so let's bring that up there. Okay, with the bass frequency, I think I need to take out a bit of the, that lower mid. There's another bunch of people walking past. They're not even noticing there's a studio and a camper van. Okay, so we're gonna put that through our bus with the compression as well. Okay, here we go. 
I'm actually going to put... It shouldn't really, but I'm going to put a little bit... Oh no, let's do this properly. Okay, with bass. It's best not to put reverb on bass because it will make everything muddy and washed out. But if you put reverb on the top part of a bass, it's fine. So let's do that. But we're going to save off first. Okay, so Ocean 4. So let's copy the bass onto the next track there. There we go. Right, let's knock off all the bottom end. And let's put a bit of reverb on it. Now Cubase has got three reverbs in there, but there's two that I just go to. So this is the Roomworks. I find it particularly useful for creating stereo width, especially if you've got a mono source. You can just put a very tight little reverb on there. So bring the pre-delay down, reverb time down to 0.22. And it just opens up the stereo width. bit too much. Okay, on the original bass track, I'm going to bring the, the highs down a bit. Okay, good. So let's move on. So that's given a nice bit of width to the bass there without uh, compromising the low end of the bass, because obviously if you put reverb on there, you could end up getting phase issues on the bass. And as we we're discussing earlier, if you're in a club or on TV, everything gets summed together. One might cancel out the other. You might end up with no bass on your track at all. Okay. Right, so next we're gonna put on a nice ARP. So let's find a... So it's essentially the bass sound, another two octaves up. Okay. Okay, that's the one that we're going to use there. So same, let's put some MIDI in. So you can see with creating a track like this, you end up repeating loads of things loads of times. We're putting in the MIDI part, we're using that to drive the audio, um, and it, repeating, repeating, it just goes into muscle memory, I would hope anyway. Uh, right, so this is the ARP, an essential part of any track, I think. There's the ARP, even if you have it so subliminally in track, it just glues the whole thing together. Okay. Right. Okay, let's just check that. Okay, good. So, ARPs are meant to be repetitive. So let's have that go through the entire track there. Perfect. So, right, let's um, make that another nice colour. Here we go. C colour. Right, and we want a audio track here. Okay, so up. Right. So we're just going to start it off with a really low cut-off point so you can't hear it, and then it's going to gradually come into the track. It's almost percussive here. It's 
So in a similar way, we're gonna put the ping pong reverb on there as well. Ping pong delay, sorry. Let's start playing around with things. Playing with the cutoff and the uh, release here on the envelope. Okay, now we're playing with the modulation. We're on pulse width modulation at the moment. So you can hear it getting a lot narrower there. And then you bring it down to more of a square wave. With these kind of ambient tracks, it's always good to bring up to a crescendo at the, um, the drop down. And then when it kicks back in is drop everything right back down again. Let the beats do the, the work, create all the space. So it still keeps the track driving forward, so then it gives you a point where you can build it all back up again. So we're going for another crescendo here. Don't be afraid. Push it to the extreme. Well, that was a bit mad at the end, but it might work in the mix, who knows. Right, so we've got that now. We're gonna put some compression on it again. Compression, here we go. This really just needs to be a kind of limiting compression. So a very, very uh, steep curve here on the ratio. Right. Ah, someone just noticed the studio and the camper van. First person. <laughs> right, ping pong delay. Okay, now this needs to go right down in the mix. So let's bring that down. And let's take it through to the instrument one with the ducking compression on it as well. Right, where's that clap that comes in? It's too loud. I think it's time to start adding in the ocean now. So let's get the ocean back in there. Here we go. So, blimey, that's loud, right? Okay. That ocean just sounds absolutely sublime. Okay, let's have a listen. See what the track sounds like now. Right, that arc, let's have that come in a lot later. Right, I think we can turn the ocean down a bit there. Wow, it's beautiful. Great, so next we're going to have a look at some more sounds, but inside Cubase. So Cubase um, comes with some great add-ons. There's uh, one called um, 
uh, granular guitars. So let's have a look at that. Okay, this is in one of the Cubase plugins called Pad Shop. Pad Shop Pro, Pad Shop. Here we go. Love granular guitars, so warped and spacey. Uh, so here we go. Let's have a look. Okay, so these are all the granular guitar sounds. Just completely bonkers. Really great for this kind of ocean thing, right. So the preset we're going to go for is Alien Gamelan Cloud. Brilliant. So that's one spooky sound. All the sounds in granular guitar, they're all quite um, a, a harmonic. And harmonic, whatever it is, you probably know better than I do. So putting it over chords is, can be quite difficult. But building a track around them on, is another thing. They're real song starters. So that's just great, just adds a whole dimension of madness over top. So you can see I've just started it somewhere and I just bunged it down without really thinking about it. So that's just nasty. Sometimes I just find myself being a bit too safe. But really, we should just push it to the edge. If it sounds completely mental, maybe that's the way to go. Right, that's enough of Alien Gamelan Cloud. Right, let's have a look at another thing. So what about putting some crazy drum sounds in here? Okay, if we go into Groove Agent, Steinberg have got another fantastic pack called Neuro Mindset, which has got um, dubstep, chill step, drum and bass, garage sounds in it. So Neuro Mindset, and we're gonna go for Epic 2 in this one. So I did my homework just to save time and make this all happen a bit quicker. Whoa, bloody hell. Okay, let's just turn that down a little bit. Okay. Just really great epic sounds. Let's just bung some in. We don't know what we're doing. Don't be scared. I'll EQ it later. Okay, so that was a right old clobber of stuff, like someone dropping a load of cutlery, but I reckon with a bit of jiggery pokery, let's put some ridiculous reverb on there. I'm just having some fun now. So, Revelation is one of the most amazing reverbs ever. It's so clear. You know those 20 second reverbs, uh, the let's can reverbs that everyone gets excited about? This plugin does it, and it's the Cubase algorithmic reverb. Right, so it's <laughs> so really, it's just add a bit of atmosphere.
Lovely. So that is making a track at the seaside in a camper van, in a mobile studio. The equipment is a real pleasure. I actually took this out last week just on a dry run, just to test it, it all did actually work. Um, the leisure batteries held up. There's a pub just across the road. The seagulls are going crazy outside. This is a lovely setup to use. It all fits on the tiny little table. The Steinberg interface is really robust. It's amazing that it does all the mobile recording with the iPad, which I'm really excited about because back home where my proper studio is, I've got a really nice Beckstein uh, upright piano downstairs. But to run leads all the way from the, the top floor down to the bottom is such a pain. But now I can just stick my Sontronics mics into the top on cardioid pattern and pick up a beautiful piano sound. Um, I just put the backing track onto Cubasis, go down, headphones, record all the piano, then take it back up to studio. I'm also really looking forward to going on location and recording some more sounds to, to inspire some more interesting creations because it can get a little bit stagnant in the studio and sometimes you do find yourself just repeating the same old stuff. So this little setup here is, has just been so inspirational to go out and do something absolutely brand new. So thank you very much for uh, taking time to listen to the video, watching the sunset and all the people walking their dogs in um, Broadstairs in Botany Bay and uh, just wish you loads of luck with all your productions. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the track building and thank you very much.